But let's get more on a story I covered on Friday as a first. And many residents in Farnborough are utterly furious after an apartment block was taken over by the Home Office to house up to 300 asylum seekers. The new block of flats, um, over 100 flats, was initially marketed as homes for rental at £1,400 per month, but now it's been withdrawn from the market. Well, joining me now is local resident Jazz Stocking. Jazz, welcome to GB News. Thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure. Jazz, the thing that struck me when I spoke to the leader of the council um, in Rushmore, Gareth Lyon, on Friday was the total lack of consultation. So can I get some clarity from you, Jazz, about how local residents first found out about this? I first found out about it, I think it was Thursday night, Nigel Farage ran a piece on it, and uh, my other half called me into the room and said, have you seen this? And so I rewound it back and shocked, actually, and then I got in touch straight away with a few friends, and nobody knew anything about it at all. So I think and it was sort of shocked at first, and now it's turned to anger with a lot of people. And the thing is, as you said, you know, you find out from the media that in itself is a complete pig's ear. It's a complete breakdown in communications. But yet the council themselves, Jazz, were claiming that they didn't know much about it either. They were told this was a fait accompli by the Home Office. And yet, how does it make you feel and people you know in the Farnborough area knowing um, that people, you know, OK, we can say they have to have somewhere to live, but they're being given brand new luxury flats with all mod cons, £1,400 a month. And as I heard on Friday, a lot of people locally can't even afford to get on the property ladder. Well, I think it's um, people need a minimum of, say, £3,000 a month coming in just to be able to afford to live in these areas. We're living in one of the wealthiest parts of the country, but just because it's wealthy doesn't mean everybody's got money. I've spoken to people that have been ten have been told it's ten years just to get a council house in this area, you know. And, and how much those people feel? They're they're living in overcrowded houses, often with children with their parents, and they would love one of these apartments. I, I, I'm shocked myself. I mean, I'm fine on my accommodation, but even my children struggle. What my eldest son's had to move away to Northern Ireland. He just cannot afford to live in this area. It's um, I think it's a scandal too far. For local residents. And, and what about the notion um, that this is brand new, people were just kind of piggybacked straight in, and the location itself is something of some concern, because as, as I understand it, Jez, it's directly opposite um, a Farnborough Technical College, some 8,000 teenage students. A lot of the parents whose children attend that college must, must be quite concerned about the prospect of over 300 total strangers being opposite where their children go to school. I think the problem is a lot of the time, as locals all over Britain, we get lied to by councils, by the government, by the Home Office. They always come along with the same old line that it's just going to be um, women and children in these places. And then when you turn up and, and have a look at even the local hotels, we've got one down the road, I would say probably 80% of people in there are single men. And there has been a crime wave in the area, even though the council will tell you there isn't. There's a lot of cover up on this. And I think if I had my children at that college, I would be very concerned. I think um, 300 people moving in, I would say probably at least 200 of those will be just single men. And I've got a feeling that we could have a problem with the local college and, and the young girls leaving there every day. So local parents probably will be concerned. I mean, we don't know, but concern can lead to anger. Yeah, and Jez, um, I put it to Gareth Lyon, the leader of Rushmore Council, on Friday that um, maybe he's just a, a NIMBY. This is the case of not in my backyard, and whether we like it or not, the situation is people come to our country um, and they have to have somewhere to live. What would you say to people who said that you're also acting like a NIMBY? Well, as far as I'm concerned, if anyone comes to England, if they haven't got the money to come here, just go or live in a tent. Many young Brits live in tents in, in fields and things. I met, I met a, a chap on, on Sunday, it broke my heart, in, in sleeping in a doorway in Birmingham, 18 years service in the RAF, nowhere to live. He would love to be put in one of those apartments. I, ju I just think it's terrible. Why, 
when we've got thousands, probably millions on council waiting lists and people staying at home with parents, and that these flats are just going to be given over to people that have just arrived in the country, probably in lorries or on a boat, or I don't know how they get here, but they shouldn't be given anywhere. As far as I'm concerned, there's plenty of villages, just put a tent in a big field and let them live there. And, and, that, and that's it. I mean, I, it's, we've got to look after our own people first. Once we get our own country in, in order, then maybe help people from abroad. And Jazz, what, what about the, the notion um, that people are saying that this is it's a situation that's foisted upon your community, but you have to pull your weight, you have to um, do your bit to shoulder the load, and that's just unfortunately the world that we live in. Well, I don't know how big our shoulders are. Many, many people, a lot of my friends who have got good jobs are seriously struggling with the cost of living crisis. So how much more do they have to shoulder? How much more burden do they need? You know, I've... My belief is the local council, every single member of that should resign. Let's get some people in that will fight for local people. You know, we cannot keep forking out money on heating bills, on gas gas and electric, on shopping and everything. Even your, even your TV packages has doubled in price over the last couple of years. Absolutely everything. Pe people are on the breadline. And Jez, what would you say to the politicians locally? Because as I understand it, there's been scant opportunity to talk to them. This was presented to you as a fait accompli. If the politicians, both locally and nationally, and perhaps even the prime minister were listening to you now, Jez, what would your message be to them? Go. We've had enough. I think the people of Britain have had enough. Leo Doherty, the local MP, he's like the Scarlet Pimpernel. We seek him here, we seek him there. He's never to be seen, never gives a word to anyone. Everyone in power at the moment, the majority of them, I know there are some good people. The Prime Minister, in my eyes, just a total waste of space. They don't think of the local people. They don't think of anybody. I mean, lots of local people. We've, we've, we've been working hand in hand with um, some locals in Chichester that have got exactly the same problems. They're hopefully going to support our cause. We've been supporting theirs. I think groups and areas will start getting together. And before the government realises, there's going to be big problems on their hands. We're going to organise a protest for this weekend coming. We want numbers there. We want big numbers. Hopefully people will turn up and voice their opinions. We need the government to know that we're not happy. Councillors, they just need to go. Get people in charge that will fight for local people. OK, Jess Stocking, thank you very much for giving us that impassioned view. And we have a Home Office spokesperson who said this, we have always been upfront about the unprecedented pressure being put on our asylum system, brought about by a significant increase in dangerous and illegal journeys into the country over recent years. We continue to work across government and with local authorities to identify a range of accommodation options to reduce the unacceptable use of hotels, which costs £8 million a day. The government remains committed to engaging with local authorities and key stakeholders as part of this process.